By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I've got something special because we're going to look at a color battle, green versus blue, so two monocolor decks going head to head, but they're also completely made up out of revised cards. And that really like takes me back to uh, when I started playing. I started playing during revised and these decks actually come pretty close to the type of decks that we would play with back in the day. I guess we didn't have as many four offs as we see in these decks, but still it comes pretty close. So before I jump into the deck deck, I would just like to point out that if you want to skip that section and go straight to MTG Games, I know that some of you want to do that, uh, there's a really simple way to go at it, and that is by checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, that will take you straight to the action. And in the description below, you can also find some more information about the rule set if you are interested. Okay, and that means we're now ready to jump into the deck deck. I guess I'm gonna start with the deck of my opponent. That is a mono green force of nature deck. Let's have a look. And here we see the mono green list of my opponent. And uh, man, it's looking very sweet. I see four forces of nature. I absolutely love it. Uh, deck picture, not very good though. We see a lot of glare on this. Uh, the cards with the most glare there are Hurricanes. Hurricanes work really good in this deck. One green and X deals X damage to each creature and player. It's a sorcery. And uh, each creature with flying, I should say, which is quite important because there are no flying creatures in this deck. So there's no way that you can hit your own creatures with the Hurricane in this deck construction, which is quite nice. Of course, you are going to hurt yourself, but you're also hurting your opponent. And because this deck should go really, really quickly, you're probably um, higher in life total than your opponent. Now, why am I saying that? Because you've got a lot of ramp in this deck. We've got four Lanoir Elves and four Wild Groves. So early on in the game, you're gonna ramp up, making sure you've got a lot of mana. Then because you have a lot of mana, you're probably gonna play out your hand very quickly. Now to make sure that you have enough spells and creatures and that stuff for the whole game, um, there are four Howling Mines in this. So those Howling Mines are pretty important to keep you know, giving you fuel so that you can keep the pressure on. This is really a deck about keep the pressure on your opponent from the get-go, you know? Um, now, some decks are really good at negating creature damage. Um, if you, you know, if you play Magic, you know this. So that's why there are two amazingly cool cards in this deck. And they're the two Aladdin's rings. I mean, look at these beauties. Eight to cast, eight to use. I know it's not a great card, but still, if you've got the mana, it's pretty good. Because for that eight mana, you can tap it and deal four damage to any single target. So if your opponent is pretty low, you can start putting the pressure on with the Aladdin's Ring as well. You can also use it to kind of uh, mow away some of the creatures that maybe your opponent wants to use as blockers. So, I mean, it's just fantastic. I'm just really excited. I think it's a really cool deck. I also like that single flying carpet in this deck. I think it's absolutely hilarious. Uh, there's also a, a Desert Twister, a one-off Desert Twister in this deck. I think Desert Twister is a really good card when you've got the mana, and this deck has the mana. So maybe I would even add an extra Desert Twister or two in here. But I mean, I mean, this just looks like a really fun deck to play with, and I'm gonna play against it. So I guess I'm gonna experience what it's like to play against this deck. Talking about that, now let's take a look at my deck, my Mono Blue Pile. Let's go. And here we see my Mono Blue deck, and man, I'm looking forward to play this. This is really a blue like control deck, right? Which is what blue is usually really good at. So early game, you've got those beautiful Brassman to play out. Brassman's actually pretty good as a blocker. It's one to cast for a one three. So those are great stats originally from the Arabian Nights expansion. You can attack with it if you want, so you can deal the damage, but you then have to pay one to untap it again. So that's kind of annoying. Uh, and you can only do that during your upkeep, by the way. But I mean, I think in this deck, it's mainly meant to be uh, as a, uh, to be functioning as a blocker. Um, then as soon as you've got two blue untapped, of course, you're gonna keep those untapped because you wanna uh, make sure that you can counter. We've got four counter spells, we've got four power sinks in this deck, right? And later on in the game, you're gonna continue controlling the game through your control magics, four of those in this deck. I think they're gonna be really, really strong against the green deck because green has no answer to control magic. So that's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be a field day for me. Um, and then we have four mana shorts and this mana short, it is such a cool card. I just wanna, you know, put it in the spotlight. So mana short, one blue and two to cast. And it says like tap all the land of your opponent. So you played in your opponent's turn in their upkeep, all their lands 
get tapped and they can basically not do anything anymore. And remember, we're both just playing with revised cards, right? Because usually when you're playing uh, against an old school deck, you're going to have to deal with Moxon. So I think if I would play Mana Short, I still think it's a useful card, you know, in old school. But if I would play Mana Shorts, especially this heavily, I would make sure that I would have something to deal with the Mana Rocks, right? Flower Stones, Moxon, Soul Ring. But also, um, you know, Birds of Paradise, uh, Alana or Elsa that are in this deck. You want to find some kind of way to deal with those if your strategy is to use Mana Short as well. Mana Short and Winter Orb, for example, is also a really nice combination. So this is really a blue control deck. So my goal is try to control the game long enough, steal all his creatures, so that at a certain point I can start playing one of those beautiful Mahamoti Jins and just clone and Vesuvan them you know, just go crazy and make sure that I have how many how many Mahamotis could I have ideally with this deck? Let me see. I've got four clones, two Fazufans, two Mahamotis. So that's eight Mahamotis in total. That would be the I think that is the dream of this deck, right? So I'm going to try to do that for you guys. In this game, I'm going to try to clone as many Mahamotis as possible. I hope it's going to be more than zero because if it's zero, it probably meant that I've lost. But I'm going to try. So we've seen the deck of my opponent. We've seen my deck. Now let's go. To the match. Game number one. Here we go. Here we see my hand. Two brass mana. I believe a power sink and a counter spell there and some mana. Ooh, this looks really good for my opponent. Yupier, Lana Rael's Wild Grove, and of course that beautiful Aladdin's Ring. So that's quite a nice start for him. He can do a lot of ramping. I'm starting with a brass man past turn. There we see a Lana Rael's. And an attack here with the brass man. There's probably a Wild Grove coming right now. So there's the attack. I'm going to drop to 19. There's the Wild Grove. And it looks like I'm thinking about a Counterspell. Not doing it though. Untapping my Brass Man. Attacking again with the Brass Man. A passing turn. And now it's... Um, I'm curious. Maybe he's going to play out a Juggernaut. Yeah, exactly. A Juggernaut. I'm going to counter this. There's the Counterspell. Of course, ideally, I want to control Magic the um, Juggernaut, but it looks like I don't have a Control Magic in hand here. Remember, I'm playing with a full playset of Control Magics. Attacking again with the Brass Man. That Brass Man's doing a lot of work. Three points of damage already. Brass Man for President. And there's a Wild Growth. And I'm going to drop to 18. I'm tapping the Brass Man here. Attacking again, going to put him on 16, playing another Brass Man, keeping two blue open, so possibly I've got a counter spell in hand. There's an Elfish Archer. Now, one of the things is with, you know, my opponent ramping up so quickly with, you know, Soul Ring and Wild Groves, uh, it does mean it's going to be really difficult for me to use my Power Sinks. And this attack actually is quite interesting because my opponent here, Yoop, can now double block and kill the Brass Man. So he's going to block on just the archers, playing a giant growth, countering the giant, another giant growth. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Brassman is a goner. At least I still have one on, uh, on blocking duty here, playing um, Ivory Tower, but only three cards in hand. Ooh, what are we going to see? Aladdin's Ring, the ring we saw in the opening hand. Uh, and this is actually a big problem for me. He can start dealing... Four points of damage. And here I'm attacking with the Brass Man. I, I don't understand why. I need to keep the Brass Man on blocking duty to block the Archer and the Alana else because now he can just attack for three. And of course, he can kill it with the Aladdin's uh, Lamp. But if he does, that's going to save me four damage. So that's also worth it. Anyway, he's going to deal seven damage in total. I'm now on 12. I'm going to untap the Brass Man. Hopefully, I'm going to keep it on tap this time. I mean, he's going to deal 7 damage again if I attack with the Brass Man. That means I'm going to drop to 5 if nothing changes. And again, I'm attacking here. I think it's really a bad move on my side. I mean, why am I doing this? Brass Man is good as a blocker, you know? It's not meant for offense. So I'm on 10, and he's passing turn. Untapping again the Brass Man. He's going to deal 4 damage, going to drop to 6. And I'm just going to pass here. There's nothing I can do. I think this is the end. He's now going to attack with everything. I'm going to block the archer. Drop to four. And whoa, that's it. It is quite nice here to see a victory by Aladdin's ring. Well done, Yoop. Congratulations. And I mean, remember, my mono blue deck 
has no steel artifact. Um, it has no uh, Hercules recoil. There's nothing I can do against the Aladdin's ring. So once it hits, it hits, and that's that. Anyway, luckily, this is only game one, so don't go away yet. We've got two more games to go. And now let's go to game number two. Game number two, here we go. And man, in game one, I mean, Aladdin's ring. I think it's the first time I got killed by Aladdin's ring. Anyway, here we see my hand, Brass Man, Counterspell, Power Sync, Control Magic. Here we see the hand of my opponent here, Yoop, Force of Nature. We see a Howling Mine. We're seeing Wild Grove, Hurricane. So it's looking, uh, looking like an okay hand for him, starting with a Brass Man myself. There's a Wild Grove by a Yoop. So am I going to be able to win this one? That's a big question. Passing turn, keeping two blue open, of course. There we see a Lanawer Elves and a counter spell on the Lanawer. And there is a Howling Mine. Okay, so that is pretty sweet. Untapping the Brass Man, drawing two, of course, from the Howling Mine, playing an island, another Brass Man. And um, there is, of course, a Juggernaut that, that as, is as to be expected since he's playing with the playset. I'm expecting Control Magic here from my side, actually. Exactly, taking over the Juggernaut. And Control Magic can play a big role in this matchup. I'm playing with a full playset. You know, and for green, it's really difficult to deal with Control Magic. But this is a great answer by Yoop. A double Elvish Archers. They've got first strike, so he can double block the Juggernaut, kill it, because he's, he can deal four points of first strike damage. And that's exactly what he does. Juggernaut is dead. And I am still dealing two points of damage with the uh, Brassmans. I do think I should have kept them untapped here because I'm going to take four damage back now from the two Elvish Archers. Exactly. I'm going to drop to 16. And is he going to play out another creature? There's a regrowth into a Juggernaut, but there is a Power Sink taking care of that threat, untapping my Brassman. No, I'm not. Okay, I wonder what I'm going to do. Maybe I've got a Mahamoti in hand. Do I? It looks like I'm missing a land drop. No, I'm playing a Disrupting Scepter instead. I think... I think this is really a bad decision on my part because instead of untapping the Brass Man and, you know, keeping the Scepter in hand, I'm playing out a Disrupting Scepter that is not really going to be that impactful at this point in the game. So now I'm taking four more damage because of that Disrupting Scepter. I think this is a mistake. Wow, seven points even. Now I've dropped to nine. So is this going to cost me the game? I really need to start using Brass Man, what they're made for, and that is blocking. Let's see what else uh, Yoop can do. He still has tons of mana open. Play a Wild Grove. Still have some mana floating. And another Juggernaut. There is a uh, counter spell though on that one Juggernaut. So that's good news for me. Untapping the Brass Man now. And I'm just going to pass turn here. Maybe I've got another mana short. Or another. I haven't played a single mana short. Maybe I've got a mana short in hand here. I guess I don't because I'm not doing anything during the upkeep of Yoop here. Or am I? Okay, I am <laughs> playing the mana short. This is really good news, right? Because I'm forcing Yoop to tap down all his lands and he can't do anything with it. And now I'm playing land number six. Do I have that Mahamoti in hand? Yes, I do. Mahamoti, baby. I'm feeling good. Now I can start swinging in with the Mahamoti. Yoop, of course, being on 15, so I need three more attacks. Let's see what he can do. Tapping down the Soul Ring. Oh, wait a minute. He's got the Hurricane, of course, from his opening hand. Oh, no. Oh, man. This is bad news. Hurricane for six. Look at my life total, by the way. I'm on three. He's playing another Elvish Archer. This is horrible. Playing another land. What can I do here? Going through the motion. Maybe play another Brass Man? Okay, first using Disrupting Scepter. So he's going to discard a Lanawer Elves. Play another Brass Man. Okay, so at least I've got a good line of Brass Man defense. So the Brass Man are ready for the Elvish Archers. But what else is my opponent going to do here? Remember that Force of Nature that he had in hand at the opener? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yes, Counterspell. This is such an important Counterspell. Counterspell number three, by the way which is kind of insane. I'm finding a lot of counter magic. I'm still alive. I can still win this one. Using my scepter, he's actually discarding Force of Nature. Wow, I'm really lucky here because the good thing about Force of Nature and the bad thing for me is I cannot control magic it. So I have to counter it. And if I cannot counter it and it resolves, there's not a lot of 
things that I can actually do against it. So now I'm going to block here. So an attack with all the archers, there we see a giant growth. So that basically means I'm going to lose one brass man and my opponent is going to lose two elvish archers. That's actually a pretty good exchange. I do understand this attack, you know, because I'm so low on life. He wants to put the pressure on, but I think, you know, this is ending up in my advantage. There is a juggernaut. Hopefully I've got a control magic here. I know I've got a power sink. Oh, but a power sink for four. So he can tap four, right? That's an interesting decision. So this power sink is not working out for me. Playing an island. Can I now playing? Okay, playing glasses of Urza. Let's take a look at his hand. Ooh, hurricane. He can finish me off with that one hurricane. That's probably why he was discarding the force earlier. He wanted to keep that single hurricane. And now he's going through my deck trying to see how many counter spells I still have. I mean, I've played three counter spells already and two power sinks. I'm really low on counter magic here. I mean, this is making me nervous. He can win the game on the spot with that hurricane if I don't have my last counter spell in hand. Okay, so first things first, playing a control magic on the juggernaut. So that's good, good uh, news for me. Dealing two points of damage. He's going to drop to seven in passing turn. And okay, this is good news. This is good news. So this mana short is absolutely important. Because remember, Hurricane is a sorcery. He is finding a forest now, so he could play a Hurricane for two, but then I'm still on one life. I don't think he's going to do that. He's already played at one Hurricane, only has two Hurricanes in his deck. So I'm going to untap. I, I just want to know what he's got in hand. An Aladdin's Ring. Ooh. If I want to win this game, I got to win it quickly. I could untap the two Brassman, and if I can then can find a way to... Maybe control magic, the Elvish Archer, I can actually win the game. Looks like I don't have that option though. I'm only untapping the Brass Man. What am I going to do here? Playing another island? I have to attack, of course. I'm expecting him to jump here on the Archer. That's exactly what happens. Passing turn. Another mana short, perhaps? No, another forest? What is he going to do? Playing out a Wild Grove first. That's kind of a no-brainer. Tapping four for a Juggernaut. I'm probably going to let this resolve. I'm fully focused on that Hurricane. Playing an Aspect of Wolf. That is pretty sweet. So if I've got a Power Sink now, I could Power Sink, and then he's forced to tap all his mana. Exactly, that's what I'm doing here. Power Sinking the Aspect. Knowing full well that with the power sink, my opponent is forced to tap everything out. Taking a look at his hand, we see another forest there. There, yes, now I've won the game. Control Magic Juggernaut, boom! Game number two in the pocket. So it's 1-1, one, one, and that means we're going to go to a thriller of a game number three. Game number three, here we go, the deciding match. There we see the hand of my opponent. No ram though. We do see a nice juggernaut. Saw a desert twister there. And look at that. I've got a soul ring in hand and a power sink. And we're off to the races. Starting here with a soul ring. There's an elfish archer for some early pressure by Yoop. And passing the turn here. So I'm going to drop to 18. Let's see if I can do anything with all this mana. There's a disrupting scepter. It's something. I kind of feel like the scepters and the books haven't really done much for me in this matchup. Okay, there's a power sink on the juggernaut. That's a very useful power sink. And using my disrupting scepter here now. And he's discarding an hurricane. Okay, that's pretty good. And ooh, nice. Playing a mana short. In response, we see the giant growth on the elvish archer though. So I'm now on 11. And playing a jam date home. The problem here is that I've already taken quite a lot of damage, right? That Elvish Archer is really doing a great job. There's another Elvish Archer, so I'm going to drop to 9. I really need my Brass Man right now. Okay, there's one. That's good. That's a good start. Going to use the book. Draw a card, and I'm going to use the Disrupting Scepter. So I'm kind of stabilizing now. I wonder if he's going to attack with both. Looks like he's got a Regrove. He could Regrove the Giant Grove. Exactly. And then he's got to attack. He's basically forcing... Yeah, he's forcing my hand, right? So I'm going to drop to 7. I knew he had the Giant Grove, but I kind of felt like I had to block. 
using the Gem Day Tome here, drawing an extra card, and okay, playing a clone. It's not ideal, but at least it's something. So we're exchanging life. I'm on five. Oh, this is looking bad for me. I just, I just need like a Mamoti Jin. Okay, another clone. Okay, I can, I can block. I can do that. So we're exchanging again. So now things are looking up for me. I'm still on five. I've got the book. I've got the scepter. I mean, I've got another book, I guess. Oh, force of nature. Oh, that's a problem. That's a problem. I've got nothing against the force. I mean, it could control magic it, but then I'm going to die anyway. Okay, for Suvan Double Ganger, that's something. But I cannot pay the upkeep cost the next turn. Okay, playing a Lana Elves. I think he shouldn't have played the Lana Elves, by the way. He should have kept it in hand. Because then I can no longer target it with the Vesuvan. And I would have been forced to play, uh, pay the Force of Nature upkeep. I think he's going to win regardless. Force of Nature is such a good card in this matchup. Because there's just nothing I can do once it hits the board. So, I mean, I'm drawing a lot of cards here. I've got control, but that Force of Nature is so going to kill me. Control magic, okay. <laughs> this, is, this is just so funny. I mean, I'm going to die next turn, right? Because the way Force works, exactly. I mean, yeah, I can draw a lot of cards, but I've got nothing here. No, I'm going to die. The way Force of Nature works is you've got to pay four green during your upkeep. And if, if you cannot pay the four green, then it deals eight damage to you which is bad, but at least it doesn't tap itself, so you can still attack. But in my case, I was on five. So, but you have to understand, it was the only way I could kind of live for a few more seconds. Anyway, uh, I thought this was a very entertaining match. Let me know if you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you'd like to see more of these, like color revised battles on the channel, cause yeah, you know, maybe uh, I'll, I'll make it happen. Anyway, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And um, if you enjoyed what you've seen, please hit that like button. It helps a lot. Also, you can comment and share all that helps to make the channel grow and be more successful, even more successful than it already is, of course, thanks to your help. And if you're new to Timmy Talks, hey man, welcome. I'm happy to see that you've found the channel. Please consider subscribing and hit that bell. Okay, now that that is all out of the way, there's one last thing that I would like to tell you, and, and that is that you can also become a sponsor of the show. You can support us, you can support Timmy Talks, starting with $1 a month, and it's quite simple. All you have to do is click on the info card that's appearing right now, and that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And on that Patreon page, you can read all about how you can support Timmy Talks, and when you actually decide to become a patron of the channel, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, you get access to the Timmy Talks events, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video. And that means also this one. So let's go to the end scroll and take a look at the fantastic, wunderbar, amazing channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the Ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.